And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Ash Vi. This looks like a pretty interesting uh, donation deck from a viewer over on YouTube. We have um, a Hexcore Foundry Frostbite deck. So we have lots of Frostbite in here. We got Hexcore Foundry to keep our hand filled. And of course, we're going to be playing Ash to help finish the game out because, you know, if we Frostbite enough stuff, we have our leveled up Ash, make our enemies not be able to block and kill them from there. So I think the thinking here with Hexcore Foundry and Frostbite spells is that like the Frostbite spells are kind of temporary where they, they do a good job of slowing the opponent down, but they don't necessarily remove units all the time. And so they can be card disadvantage. Like if you just use you know, like a Frostbite spell just to save some life from like a big attacker, but you don't get rid of it, all you're doing is you are slowing the game down, but your opponent can just kill you again the next turn, right? Attack attack with that big thing the next turn, and hopefully you have more Frostbite spells, and so on. Well, if we have Hexcore Foundry, then um, if we just basically use Hexcore Foundry to increase all of the resources in the game, so both you and your opponent have a lot more resources, since you have more resources, you're able to use your Frostbite spells um, as your extra resources, and it's not and with this game how you can only go six wide on the board it doesn't matter if your opponent has you know more and more and more units in hand because they can only go the six wide on the board and so it doesn't you know so that that's not a big deal so i think that's kind of the thinking here between the the frostbite cards and the hex core foundry um but we'll see we got a couple starlet seers in here to be able to buff up some units in the deck that hopefully we draw with the foundry of course, also the Hearth Guard that can do that as well. Rhyme Test Shaman does a great job frostbiting an enemy each round. Uh, and then we have Vi. Vi is just going to be uh, challenging stuff that was frostbitten or also being a really big unit for whenever we have our leveled up Ash that could maybe do a bunch of damage to them. Finally, one pack Vitality at the top end. So pretty interesting looking list. And we're going to try it out. We'll go play five games in ranked. Aurelia Azir. This is our first time playing Aurelia Azir today, and really first time in a while playing this deck. So I don't think I want to keep both Ash against Aurelia Azir. We kind of need earlier stuff, but like Hearthguard's a great card to have access to. What if I mulligan both Ash? Is that crazy? What if I keep Hearthguard because it's a lot better? Because, right, like we need to play defense. Hearth Guard's a very good defensive card. And I figured that with us mulligan those, like we'll find some other things uh, in the mid game for defense. I like the Brittle Steel a lot, especially with Hexcore Foundry, because it's really cheap. You want cheap spells with Hexcore Foundry. There's two Brittle Steels in here. I could I could see having three Brittle Steels in here with uh, Hexcore Foundry. Echo through the ages. Come on in. Come on in. Oh, right, that thing turns into a 4 4. Well, I'll just block here. I'll just take that for now. I was thinking that was going to be turned into a 3 3. So I was just thinking about Azir, but then obviously, yeah, obviously the. Emperor's dies too. All the world on one arrow. Let's take it up. Hmm. That shape stone card's not not bad. Yeah, it's not too bad. May my steps and my heart be light as air. 
So that levels up his ear. That's just four mana put five things into play. <laughs> Halfway level up his ear by itself. It's maybe a little too easy to level up his ear. The sparring student's gonna be like a, I don't know, million million. Oh, I didn't mean to block with that. Oh, I because I need to block that that was sparring student. Oh, what was I doing? Right. <laughs> I guess I did. Yeah, I don't know. All right. <laughs> oh well. I don't think we're winning that anyway. But yeah. Why don't people why don't more people play that deck? That deck looked great. I wonder why I don't see that deck more. Is it that anybody else that plays that deck is already in Master's rank, maybe? Maybe that's it. That deck looked pretty good. All right, Tom Kench, Sir Ranka. Super glad we found the Aftershock. We have three Aftershocks in here to destroy landmarks. Oh, you're all so cute. That's going to be pretty important against Starspring. And their deck already draws lots of cards. They have a, a bunch of things that draw cards. Of, of course, Sir Ranka draws lots of cards. So, if we... Have Hexcore Foundry where it increases both of our resources. If they're also already drawing lots of cards, they can they can run out of cards in hand, and so that, then it won't be too much of a downside. Go, All right, let's get the Starlets here and play. Hmm. Oh, I guess everybody else is playing Aurelia's here. I guess maybe it's just me. Because, yeah, yesterday and today. Yeah, today that was our first time to play against it. Yesterday we only played against it once or twice also. Really just didn't see the deck. Bring the fucking back to the state home, pal. I don't think the Vi would have worked, but we'll see. I'm getting the Sex Core Foundry in play, because like I said, they have lots and lots of cards that they're drawing.
A Tom Kench is like kind of a, a great card against just all Frostbite spells, though, isn't it? Because it doesn't. It's a card that will win the game without attacking. Yeah, you know, it just doesn't matter that if it if it attacks or not. I must inspire where once I shepherded. Right, that's my job. Shepherding, I mean. I'm doing this my way. So yeah, they don't get to um, hush and acquire taste. Both. Look out for reavers. It's a pretty early hush. They could have attacked and seen if I blocked and then hushed. Love drawing that other Vi. Love drawing that. So that went really well for me, right? Because they got a hush out of their hand. I can cast Vault Breaker three times. Yeah, that was a... A pre-hush. Okay. Table for one, if you oblige. Hey, is uh, dinner on you then? They're out there. I'll spot them. So how are they going to win the game if they don't have Star Springs? That's a pretty fair question to ask. Right, like what what would their plan be? Faster than my arrow? I think not. We've killed two Star Springs so far. I love just like really weird games like this. Because like they just try to control the board, but then we just don't really run out of cards because of the foundry. And they try to win out off of Star Spring, but then the Star Spring's not an option anymore. It's too late now. They're, they still have one Star Spring left. I have one Aftershock left. Stand for violence. So it's certainly possible that they find the third Star Spring and I do not find the third Aftershock. I don't think. No, I don't think I have. The question was, have you tried Ash Sedwani with Sharima? No, I haven't. What is? What do you use Sharima for? Instead of Noxus, your know, Noxus gives you like the Culling Strike and all that kind of stuff. All right, good. We found the Aftershock. Swiftly now. So I don't really need to attack with that. Okay, use vulnerable.
Putting a Vi back into the deck's not bad. Try to help draw it again. Alright, let's get this level up Ash started. Alright, so two Tom Kench down and two Star Spring down. And we're gonna save this Aftershock for the third Star Spring. I don't know if we can win anymore. That's gonna be tough for them to win this. They get to draw lots of cards. Soraka. Live with purpose. But what do these cards do? It's kind of nothing, right? And there we go. They have came to the same conclusion. And, and we locked him out. out. Is that if you, it's a good reason to include landmark removal in your deck. Destroy the landmark. Win the game. So does Entombing release captured units? Yes. Because the, the units are captured. The captured units only stay there until um, whatever captured them leaves play. So yeah, it would they would stay there. Hard to mulligan champion champion, but again, this is a super aggressive deck. I really hope we draw, you know, one, two, three mana units. Units. Oh, pack mentality, you're the worst card. Oh, literally unplayable. All right, because like we had troll chant for one of these unit. Oh man, O for three. This is the risk of keeping the champions. I could have just mulliganed, you know, everything and not keep the champions. Maybe that's the smarter play to do. Might as well, I suppose, right? Give the aggro deck more tools to kill you. Probably a bad idea. Alright, well, um, you know, it was, it was a risk keeping, you know, Ash, Vi, Troll Chance. I needed something to play, but didn't find anything. Thanks, Starless here. You're a real pal. Why did I just play that instead of just playing Ash? and challenging anything and letting them play something better. Taking two. Me. 
I don't know if this is a Dustmate deck or not. I hope not. Guess it is. For the Empire. The few for the many. Okay, so next time against Hyper Aggro, lesson learned, don't keep champions. When your champions are four and five, just don't keep them. Just mulligan, look for your ones and two units. So lesson learned, that's a good good lesson to know. Good lesson to learn. So, so far we just haven't handled Hyper Aggro. But that's also kind of my fault. Okay, another aggro deck. We'll see how we handle this one. All right, let's keep Omen Hawk Starlets here. So this time, finally, we have one drop, two drop, and in fact, we can just curve one through five, I suppose. Revolution. Words of power linger in the air. I think I'm just gonna save my three spell mana for flash freeze instead of playing this hexcore foundry. What's a warrior but hands to wield a weapon? The heart and mind to aim at strike. Alright, so they have two blade fragments. I'm sorry, who are you? That's pretty harsh. Riven doesn't even know who Blade Squire is. No backing down. Best not ruffle our feathers. That's pretty harsh. Getting a mash. Swiftly now. Making the dead dead. That'll do. Got the frostbite combo. Alright, much better opening hand. A new will rise. There we go. Two and two. Yeah, we've gotten some fast GGs here. Us getting ran over twice, and and then that one. There's <laughs> been some fast GGs. With the... When we played the Abyss Control... I really is here again. When we played the Abyss Control, our first game was longer than this. <laughs> our first game. Okay, let's get rid of Troll Chant. We'll keep Mystic Shots. Why does this pack mentality keep showing up in these aggro matches? I do not want you. Get out of here. <laughs> Give me Omen Hawk. But, you know, Mystic Shot's a good one to keep, though, because of Sparring Student and Aurelia and Green Glade Duo. And then, you know, like, Tavern Keeper is not, like, one to mulligan either. So this is what a hand looks like without champions right away. Still not not bad. That landmark can be pretty annoying. Especially the guy like Inspiring Marshall. Or leveled up his ear. Attack a bunch. Um, I'm 
gonna pass. See what we see, so A lot of damage. Brittle Steel to the rescue. Yet again. Alright, they only got two cards left. But I kind of only have two cards left also, right? Because if I play Hexcore Foundry, that maybe is good for them. Pack Mentality doesn't do anything. So we're actually kind of even on cards. <laughs> My cards are kind of useless. At least two, the two middle ones. I got two Mystic Shots. Keep your distance. You need a no. That's bad. Okay. May my steps and my heart be light as air. I have risen. The Blade Dance means that I don't get to Mystic Shots this uh, sparring student that's not bad <laughs> and remember when we were like just even on cards just a little bit ago This this combination here, just these four cards were the exact same four cards we lost to before. Well, I guess I guess I have to block. Stand and defend. Wonder why more people don't play this deck. It seems awesome. Oh, you gotta love that. They just didn't attack with these other things. Gotta love that. This is our homeland. I'm mystic shotting that thing before a blade dance, also attacking before a blade dance. I know they can they can just throw the sparring student in front and then I do no damage to them. But still tempting them with, with these. Okay, so we struggled against the super fast aggro decks, um, not really being able to stabilize, but did fast against a little bit of a slower aggro deck, and uh, then we also got the Soraka Tom Kench deck. So I don't know, we didn't really get to see the deck too much because it was just us getting ran over in a lot of those games. You know, like that's just kind of how uh, that's just kind of how it goes sometimes. Um, Pack mentality looks like a card that just has to go, right? Like, we can't, like, as we saw, like, we had it three times, like, I think all three of those losses, right? Like, we had it in our hand, and it's just a complete dead card, right? It's just, you can't, we could just can't afford to have this card in this deck. Because I think, like, by, if, I just don't understand how this card helps us win games, right? Because if, if we can, if we get to the point, like, where we're frostbiting all their stuff anyway, we don't really need the plus two, plus two and overwhelm, right? So I would definitely get rid of pack mentality 
and get another Starless here in here, right? Starless here is a very good card, and that was a very nice card to have, like, on, on turn two. Um, right? Like, we, we... That's what our deck struggled with. We struggled with having cards to play early. And so that's what I would... I would, I would uh, do that for sure. Get another two-cost card in here. Um, let's see. Besides that, I wouldn't mind another Brittle Steel... It'd be maybe over like the three sisters or something. Cause the three sisters is just kind of an expensive flash freeze. But you can keep the three sisters, that's probably okay. But well, no, I would I would just recommend let's let's just go three brittle steel also, because um if we're drawing all these extra cards, you just want cheap real cheap cards and not over costed cards, because um three sisters is a little bit over costed for everything that it does. Um I mean, the dais, I mean, yeah, yeah, the dais is great. I mean, we do have the removal spell for the dais. We did kill one dais. They just had a second dais. And so, like, they just went second dais plus a zero plus double um, of that four drop. And we couldn't kill the azir or anything like that. Yeah, you know, we didn't have, like, a vi to challenge the azir or anything. That was pretty rough. That leveled up azir. Um... But yeah, so I, I would kind of recommend just making those two little changes. Just that'll help us out a little bit against the aggro decks. So we did learn don't keep don't keep the champions against aggro. Even though obviously that last game had been really nice to have a champion like Vi, but just don't keep them in the opener mulligan because you gotta find Omen Hawk, Starless Seer, Avaros, and Sentry. You gotta find like those three cards. And so I think getting another Starless Seer in here would really pay dividends. So I'll just get rid of that back mentality. All right, but there we go. That was Ash Vi. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And as always, feel free to leave those comments. Let me know what you think of Frostbite and Foundry, um, that uh, combination of those two together. Hopefully y'all enjoyed it. But that's going to be it here for Ash Vi. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.